Welcome. I'm, I'm your uh, guest pastor this evening, newly retired. So uh, it's good to be with you. I know I was saying to somebody, I'm, I'm retired. This is my first day of retirement. Oh, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to be going to do worship and preaching tonight. So nothing new, different. But I wasn't in all day. There you go. So that's a good thing. Um, just to note that uh, baccalaureate service will be here on Sunday at 12.30 in the uh, afternoon before graduation for Valders High School. Um, also, Vacation Bible School is coming up. That's June, Monday, June 20th through Thursday, June 23rd. And then they're going to the, have a swimming, a swimming outing in uh, Manitowoc on Friday night. Uh, and it's invite everybody, grandkids, neighbors, whoever. The kid, all kids are welcome. It's just wonderful time uh, to see so many from the community come and be a part of that. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, I invite you to stand. I would note that our organist is not here yet. We will be doing the opening hymn, but we'll be doing it a cappella. So we begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we gather in, the present, in your presence, we pray that out of your glorious riches, you will strengthen us through the power of your Holy Spirit in our inner being, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. And may we, being rooted and grounded in love, be able to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. May you be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Our opening hymn is O Day Full of Grace. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4. And I will try to lead you out. O day full of grace that we see appearing on earth's horizon. Bring light from our God that we may be abundant and joy this season. God shine for us now in this dark place. Your name on our hearts emblazon. For Christ bore our sins and not his own when he on the cross was hanging. And then he arose and moved the stone that we unto him belonging might join with angelic hosts to raise our voices in endless singing. God came to us then at Pentecost, the Spirit new life revealing, that we might no longer mourn in death, be lost its power over us dispelling. This flame will the mark of sin efface and bring to us all true healing. We made it through. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you sent upon the disciples the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, look upon us and all churches and open our hearts to the work of your Spirit. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service in your kingdom. Through your Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is written in the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, 
they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound, oh, it's cut off here. <laughs> okay, let's try again. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. Here Paul teaches about the necessity of living by the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we are promised the gift of the Holy Spirit in baptism. The Spirit not only empowers our faith and love, but also assures us that we are indeed God's children. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. The word of the Lord. We'll sing the first verse of O Holy Spirit, Enter In. O Holy Spirit, enter in, and in our hearts your work begin, and make our hearts your dwelling. Son of the soul, O light divine, Around and in us brightly shine, your strength in us upwelling. In your radiance, light from heaven now is given, overflowing. Gift of gifts beyond all knowing. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. 
Again, this is at the, uh, the Last Supper. And Jesus is now teaching them about the promised Holy Spirit. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. A little Johnny was getting baptized at the river. And the pastor asked him, Do you believe in Jesus? Yes, the boy says. So the pastor takes him and dunks him in the river. And then he comes up out of the river and he says, Did you see Jesus? No, the boy says. So the pastor dunks him again. When he pulls him up, he asks, Did you see Jesus? No, the boy says. This time the pastor holds him under a long time. And finally he pulls him up and asks, Did you see Jesus? The boy sputters, gasps for breath, and finally says, No, I don't think he fell in around here. I don't actually think that you're necessarily going to see Jesus when you're baptized. But, um, but you know what? At baptism, we are promised the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. That's what Jesus is talking about. This is the promise. We're celebrating Pentecost. Pentecost is oftentimes called the birth of the church because the Holy Spirit comes and empowers them. Uh, at the end of Pentecost, at the end of that reading, in, in that chapter 2, it says, and 3,000 were added to the church that day. All I can say is, it's a good thing they had 12 pastors. That would be a lot of people to take care of and minister to. Um, the Holy Spirit is promised. What Pentecost means is like 50th. Pentecost happens on the 50th day after the resurrection, after Easter. That's how it gets its name. It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. Then there were the resurrection appearances, and Jesus taught them and helped them to understand from the scriptures why, why this had to be and how even in the Old Testament, the Old Testament speaks of this coming, of this Messiah, of this one who would lay down his life who would take away our sins, who would heal us and the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, that there would be this new covenant, this covenant that God would have, this covenant of grace, this covenant of the Spirit. This all happens 10 days after the ascension, after Jesus goes to heaven. But at the ascension, when, when Jesus is going, he gives them the great commission. And then they go and they pray. And at Pentecost, we see the fruits of their prayer, the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. Luke wrote in speaking in chapter 1 of Acts, uh, or, or speaking of, of Pentecost here, he says, Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Why? 
Because Pentecost, what we know as Pentecost, happens 50 days after the resurrection. But that was during the time of Passover. And this was a time of another Jewish festival, uh, the Festival of Weeks. And so typically, they think back then, Jerusalem probably had about 50,000 people that lived in the city. But during these festivals, when, when Jews would come from all over, there would be 200,000 or more in the city coming to, to be a part of the, 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 the special uh, religious observation of observing of these special festivals. Before he ascended, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so this is what we see at Pentecost, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling them to speak in these other languages so that these Jews from all over, these people from all over, from different countries, would be able to understand the message, the gospel that they were preaching, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. At the beginning of the service, we prayed, Heavenly Father, we ask in your, in your presence, we pray that out of your glorious riches, you will strengthen us through the power of your Holy Spirit in our inner being so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. You see, we too have this promise. This is part of the promise that we receive in baptism. And what, what, what the Holy Spirit wants to do is, is, is to, to ground us in Christ's love. And so he goes on, he says, may we be rooted and grounded in love and be able to grasp how wide and high and long and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Why? That we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. You know, this is the fullness of God's love in Christ. Love in our heart, put there through the work of the Holy Spirit. One heart, one mind. That's what we're to have as, as, as the body of Christ, as the church of Christ. One heart, one mind. The body and mind of Christ. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Paul wrote to the Galatians, and he said, and he was comparing, you know, the, 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 the sinful nature that you had versus the Spirit of Christ that's now in you. And he writes and he says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Living not by the law, but by the Spirit. Paul would say, you know, I used to live by the written code, meaning the Ten Commandments and, and all the, the regulations and all the things that he was given as a Pharisee. But now he lives by the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. Paul wrote, he says, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. See, all the apostles live in this relationship with Christ through the Spirit. The point came for each of them when they came, so to speak, to the end of themselves. They began to see they weren't as good as they thought they were. Their mind was, was set on things below and set on, on things above. Sometimes we get a glimpse of our pride or, or our self-centeredness and we realize we're not the people that we necessarily want to be, that we thought we were. Those can be turning points, points when we turn to God, okay? And we ask God for God's help, for God's work in our life, to serve God instead of ourselves. Without the Holy Spirit, they would have been stuck in themselves. In Acts chapter 1, when Jesus is ascending to heaven and he's giving them this great commission to go out into all the world and make disciples, and then they gather around him and they ask, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? 
They were looking backward, the way things were, thinking that somehow Jesus was going to resurrect the past. But there's a new future ahead of them. Let me ask you, how many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? Just one. But four more to stand around and tell you how much they like the old light bulb better. <laughs> See, that's part of the problem, is looking backward rather than forward. They were looking back to past glory. The glory days of like King David or, or Solomon and all the things that, that Israel had been. They were trying to recreate the past. But Jesus is sending them out with a new commission, with a new mission to go out, make disciples, followers of Christ into all the world. How do you do that? They must have had great apprehension on, okay, they go back. He says, go back, pray, wait. The Holy Spirit's coming. But honestly, you must wonder, what are they thinking? How are we going to do this? Jesus left. How, who are we going to follow? And quite honestly, even for us, going out with this mission, we have the mission too. But sharing your faith, especially one-on-one, -on -one, can be a little scary, challenging. Our mission as the body of Christ is to do that, to be the people that, that go out, that we too have the commission. Go make disciples, share, live it. Being Jesus' feet and hands, and yes, his voice. Sharing God's word. When we say that, that's part of our mission, sharing God's word. But you know what? First we need to know God's word before we can share it. To have it in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds. But it's also sharing God's love. You know, it's been said that they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You listen a lot more to people that you know that care about you. We need to, to be authentically Christian. That means living Christ. Like, like Paul said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. Living it out. What does that mean? What does that look like? Um, St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel always. If necessary, use words. And what he meant was, is you live it. You know, you're, you're an expression. You live that Christian life. You live what Jesus taught. You're, you're authentic in your faith and in your living. But you know what? Speaking the words is also necessary. And that's part of what Luther said, that that's, that's when you know that, that the church is the church, is when it speaks the word of Christ, when the gospel is heard, when faith is expressed in words as well as in our actions. God is there and God cares. And people need to hear that. In Romans chapter 10, Paul wrote, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know what? That's what we heard. That was from Joel. That's what we heard in our, in our uh, Pentecost reading from Acts chapter 2. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But then Paul goes on. He says, but how are they to call on one of whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone proclaiming it? That's the call of the church. This is the mission that we have as followers of Christ. We're called to, to share it and also to live it. That's the Great Commission, the apostleship. Apostle means one sent, sent out, the apostolic ministry. We may not be ap uh, um, apostles, but as we say in the Nicene Creed, this is uh, the Catholic Apostolic Church. It means the universal faith, but also going out and sharing it. Jesus' great commission was not go build churches. It was go make disciples. 
That's the point. Jesus went out and mingled with everyone. He went out into the streets. He didn't wait for them to come to him. He went to them, to anyone. And he called them, come, follow me. What prepared the, the apostles for this mission? Number one, they received the Holy Spirit. Ultimately, it was God's work. It was God's empowerment, God's inspiration, God doing it through them. What opens us up to the work of the Spirit? First, prayer. Prayer, speaking to God, asking, Lord, opening ourselves to the work of the Spirit in our lives. In the second reading, and I think in our scriptures, we hear about Christ, about the work of the Holy Spirit. It's making us children of God, helping us to know God's love for us. It's, it's Abba Father. It's God at work. When we talk about the divine inspiration of the scriptures, it, that too, is, it's part of the Holy Spirit's work. In 1 Peter, he says, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was yours, that is yours, made careful search and inquiry. And the Spirit of Christ within them indicated the sufferings destined for Christ in his sub subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. We too have that Spirit that helps us to understand the Holy Spirit calls us through the gospel, enlightens us, and keeps us in true faith. They lived with Jesus. That was the second thing, that, that Jesus was the pattern. Jesus was the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come to the Father through me. That's the key. Remember, God shapes us, prepares us, works with us, shapes us as disciples. The resurrection was, was part of the shaping of those disciples. Going from, from not understanding to boom. It was like, like thunder and lightning. Opening up their minds and their hearts to realize God is doing something. Something very special. We also can live with Jesus and be a reflection of him. We also need to have that close personal relationship with Christ. Following with God's help the work of the Spirit. How has your faith changed over time? We grow in faith. What has helped you grow in faith? Also, they knew the word, the scriptures. They came to see how Jesus fulfilled God's promises in the Old Testament. How Jesus helped them understand the scriptures. Thirdly, they, they knew God's, that, uh, God's living word, Jesus. Jesus put the rest of the scriptures into context. Began to see God's plan. God's this transcendent purpose for human life, who we are meant to be. This is what's missing from a lot of people's lives today. This understanding of we're made in God's image. We're made for something better, something higher. We're made to be God's people. It's not about this worldly kingdom, but about God's kingdom, about being the body of Christ in the world. How did the disciples turn the world upside down? By having the heart and mind of Christ through the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit. They lived with Jesus. He was their pattern. They knew God's word, the scriptures, and understood them by the work of the Holy Spirit. And, and through Christ, teaching them and showing them. And they knew and lived Jesus' teachings and lived it out by the inspiration and power of the Holy Spirit. They were authentic. They loved God and they loved others. They were affirming, sharing, encouraging, intentionally affirming and caring for others. They were available, willing to be used, even when it was scary. It took the disciples out of their comfort zones. And you know what? It can take us out of our comfort zones. We need to become that kind of inviting, reaching out church. Invite, share, turn outward. Sharing God's word, showing God's love, and serving God's world. We do it. And we do it with the help and the empowering of the Spirit. 
inspiring us. May we be of one heart and one mind with Christ our Lord and living out his mission to go make disciples, sharing God's word, showing God's love, and serving God's world. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we need to be open to you. We need you in our life for the work of the church, but Lord, just to be able to live out your love each and every day with our family, co-workers, the people you've put in our lives. Help us to have that through the work of your spirit. And help us as a church to be truly sharing your word, showing your love, and serving your world. And all God's children say, Amen. Let us stand as we sing our hymn of response. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. We it from earth to all its pulses move. Stood to my weakness, strength to me impart. And make me love you as I ought to love. I ask no dream, no prophet ecstasies, no sudden rending of the veil of clay. No angel visit and no opening skies, but take the dimness of my soul away. Have you not bid me love you, God, and Oh, all your own soul, heart, and strength, and mind. I see your cross there, teach my heart to bleed. Oh, let me seek you, and oh, let me Teach me to love you as your angels love. One holy passion filling all my frame. The baptism of the Heaven descended down, my heart an altar, and your love, love Let us pray together the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born, 
to eternal life. Amen. Let us lift up our prayers of intercession. Let us pray in the Spirit of Christ. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray for your whole church on earth. Truly fill us with your spirit of truth and love. Where we have sinned, purify us. Where we are in error, correct us. Where your body is divided, Lord Jesus, reunite us in your peace, we pray. May our witness to you, both in word and deed, be beacons of light for the communities in which we serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up God's creation, the seas and the creatures that live in them, for the lands of the earth, all creatures, vegetation and the crops of farmers. May we be good stewards of all you have placed under our care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are discerning the call to ministry and those who accompany them. Empower them with your grace and wisdom to continue building the foundation of faith that we have in Jesus Christ. We also lift up our call committee in the Synod. Lord, guide the process and all the people involved and provide a shepherd of your choosing for Faith Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, lift up those who have gone out into the world as missionaries. Watch over them. Give them courage and protection in trying circumstances. We also lift up to you fellow believers in countries where Christians are persecuted. We lift up all to you who are oppressed or persecuted for their religious beliefs. You desire love and peace among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up those in need of your healing and comforting touch. We lift up to you Lynn Brzezinski, Cheryl, Sharon Nadel, Harry Kwasny, Connie Schiesel, Don Tiener, Dolores Johnson, Ginger Lindsmeyer, Bob Klesik, Sidney Burkhardt, Doug Wilson, Jim Lawrence, Ellen Jones, Merle Graff, and Wayne Allen Husky. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up those having a birthday this week. We lift up to you James Schusler, Kevin Manson, Baylor Fox, Glenn Otto, John Thompson, Stacy Wilker, Logan Brock, John uh, Polifka, Audrey Sorensen, Camden Duco, Virginia Meyer, Don Tiener, Rebecca Schultz, Shanae, Shanae uh, Galian, and Andy Schnell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom all our needs are known, even before we ask, help us to ask according to your will. And for those good things which we dare not ask or in our blindness fail to ask for, grant it for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer by which our Lord taught us to pray, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we celebrate that great gift of forgiveness that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior as we celebrate together Holy Communion. Let us prepare our hearts for Holy Communion, reflecting on our need for Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross. None of us are perfect. We all fall short and put our faith in the amazing grace of God. Heavenly Father, forgive us our sins for Jesus' sake, and help us to put our trust in you. Amen. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. And after he had given thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is the body of Christ uh, given for you. We participate in the body of Christ. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples to drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We participate in the blood of Christ. You may be seated. Please come for all our welcome guests and everyone. All that's required is that we simply believe that Jesus truly is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving, and by the power of the Holy Spirit to conform our lives to his, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, and look upon you with his favor, and give you his joy, his peace, and his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Go in the spirit of Christ to love and serve the Lord.
sharing God's word, showing God's love, and serving God's world. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us this evening.